Good morning, this is Jen, the Liberty Lion. Today I wanna to talk to you about something going on in Texas. Rep. Terry Meza said, changing the castle doctrine is meant to create a peaceful transfer of property from victims to thieves. So there's some satire going around saying that um, Rep. Meza said some things that she didn't say and then she tweets out that she didn't say those things that what the castle doctrine or the amendment to the castle doctrine does is change how people go about defending their property um so in my opinion it doesn't really matter if she said the things or not basically what people are saying she's saying is um what she's saying she didn't say but is said in the amendment so people are saying that the amendment basically does some things and they're attributing those things to Terry Meza, Meza as a direct quote, where it's not a direct quote, but it is what it amounts to in the amendment that she's trying to change for the uh, HB number 196, which is the Castle Doctrine in Texas. So here it's talking about how um, she received backlash from her proposed amendment to the castle doctrine and people are saying that uh, she said some things that she didn't say it was a, a satire type column or comments that were written on facebook and twitter so she comes back and she says well i didn't say that but it's basically what is said in the castle doctrine through her proposed amendments so we go down here, and this is what I want to point out. Quote, she says the legislation is intended to require a homeowner to exhaust the potential of safely retreating into their habitation before using deadly force in defense of themselves or their property, and that she believes the current law emboldens people to take justice into their own hands. So I have a problem with her saying that defense of your property is justice. That's not justice. That is a spontaneous act in, um, in response to a, another act where you can't go to court because you have to defend yourself. So when someone's breaking into your home, you have to act quickly. You have to act spontaneously because they don't announce themselves. It's not like justice where you can go into a court and say, well, um, I need the court to stop this guy from breaking into my house before I shoot him or uh, defend my home with a deadly weapon. So justice, this is not a justice situation. It's not a situation for courts. So people aren't taking justice into their own hands. They're taking their own lives into their own hands. When it comes down to me or you and you're the one attacking me, I have every right to defend myself. And no government on this planet has a right to take that away. We see these in the various maxims that have been around for hundreds, sometimes thousands of years. So justice or the courts is a way for people to defend themselves, but it's also a type of arm. The courts are a type of arm, arming of yourself. And there's nothing in nature that requires a man to give up his right of arms to a court, his right to his own defense to a court. For some purposes, we all agree that that's the better way to deal with things, but it's not always the better way to deal with things. And we don't give up our human rights to courts and we don't give up our lives to courts when it's a spur of the moment decision that you have to make to protect yourself. Now, I have a right to protect not only my property, but the people in my home. Not only a right, but a responsibility, a duty. And there's no system on this earth that can um, say that they have a right to take that away. In my opinion, Rep. Terry Meza um, 
She's looking at this all wrong. She's looking at this as it's a justice issue and it's not a justice issue. It's a right to self-defense issue. It's a right to my body. It's a right to protect what's mine, my property. And it requires a spontaneous decision, not one to take to court. So let's see what the um, amendment, a bill to be an act, entitled an act relating to the use of deadly force in defense of a person or property. So she's saying that you have to justify your use in using force against someone who's using force against you and your property. Okay, so there, the justification is that they were breaking into your property in the first place, that they were on your property trying to do, um, do bad things to steal from you. So if I have things on my property that I require for my uh, health and my life, life-sustaining things, like let's say I have a water well, and someone's breaking onto my property and destroying my water well. She's saying that I have to justify using force against someone and I have to retreat into my habitation. If I retreat into my habitation and hide safely away from someone who's outside breaking my well, that's going to cause me not to be able to have water and cause me not to be able to um, water my animals or my plants, which I need for my health and my life and my child's health and life that I can't use force against them. I have to run into my home and hide. This is absurd. This is absolutely absurd. And then I have to justify using defense against someone who comes onto my property to do damage. What if they're outside killing my animals, my farm animals? I have to run inside my house and hide. And I can only use force against them if they come into my habitation, which she calls it, habitation. And uh, hide from them. And I can only use force from them when force against them when they come into my home and find where I'm hiding and try to do something to me. So this is to protect the actor against the other's use or attempted use of unlawful deadly force. There is no such thing as unlawful deadly force when you're breaking into my home, when you're on my property killing my animals or busting up my well. Or, or tearing up my vehicle, which I require to go and get food for my animals or food for my family. There's no such thing as unlawful deadly force when you're on my property damaging my stuff or stealing my stuff. Unlawful is not the same as illegal. We need to understand that. Lawful are my human rights. Legal is what the government says I can have. And the government cannot take away my human rights, my lawful rights, my God-given rights to protect myself and my property, my life and my children's lives, my family's lives. Anyone who's on my property, I have a responsibility to protect them. And that is by nature lawful. No fictional legal system created by men or women, a legal system, no written thing down, no, no thing written down can take that away. It's the unwritten law. Even if it's written, it's the unwritten law that I have a right to my life, my liberty, and my pursuit of happiness, and no one else has a right to take that away. And when they write it down on paper to take it away, it's called reducing my rights, reducing my human rights to some fictional legal system coming from the mind of some perverted person. Using written words on paper to convey an idea that they just 
reached out and grabbed from the air and thought that that was the better way to do things and then write it down on paper and call it legal and call it the law. It's not the law. And these people can go to hell. You're not going to tell me that I have to run and hide from somebody who's coming onto my property to do bad things. At what point in time do we stop and say no? At what point in time do we finally say, you know what, enough's enough. I've had enough. This is stupid. What she has written down is, is stupid. And sh she should be considered a criminal for doing this, for even trying to push this idiotic idea on people that they have to run and hide in their home before they choose to use deadly force on somebody. To prevent the other's imminent commission, commission of aggravated kidnapping, murder, sexual assault, or aggravated sexual assault, but not robber, robbery or ag aggravated robbery. So I've got to let them rob me, but not kidnap me, murder me, assault me. How do I know what they're going to do when they come onto my property? So if they're going to rob me, I have to just sit here and let them rob me, which could amount to murder when I can't feed my kids and I can't feed myself and I can't feed my animals, which provide food. When they rob me of my car, when they destroy my, my well. No, this is, this is stupid. This is stupid. And she needs to be told how stupid this is. And somebody, all of us, we need to stand up and tell her she can go to hell. I don't know who elected this person, but they obviously are brain dead. To prevent the other's imminent commission of arson, burglary, robbery, aggravated assault, or aggravated robbery, theft during the nighttime. <laughs> so it has to be theft during the nighttime. A criminal mischief during the night time. Prevent one fleeing. Oh, she left that in there. I'm surprised. Including the habitation on the land, tangible, movable property. If the actor justified in using force against the other under section 9. Oh, I got to go look and read this to know what um, Texas uh, Rep Meza wants me to know. I, I got to consider... Meza's bullshit ideas in her head and what she has written down on paper before I decide whether or not I should protect my life or protect my children's life or protect my farm animals. I got to go think about what she, her stupid idiotic ideas in her head that she wrote down. I got to go think about that. I got to think about all the stuff I read in here before I make a decision on whether or not I need to protect myself. And if I happen to make a bad decision, I'm in trouble. Stupid. This is stupid. The legal systems, all their shit written down on paper, cannot go against the natural law. It cannot. You have to stop accepting this. Let's see what some of these maxims are. Another thing on gun control is that you have the right to bear arms and arms are not just, not just weapons. It's any method you have to defend yourself. You have the right to bear arms and you have the right to have weapons, but you have the right to use any weapon you want. To bear your arms, to roll up your sleeves and fight. And that can be in, in many different ways. That can be by using um, uh, deadly force with a object, you know, a pow pow. I don't know what YouTube's going to let me say anymore. Or rolling up your arms and beating someone. Rolling up your sleeves. Custom is supposed to be higher than the written law. And it's custom to want to protect 
your property, but it's also a, a human right. So custom is in line with our human natural rights. But the stuff that they write down on paper is just to control you. It's just to take away your rights. So sometimes these people are trying to get us to act in a civilized manner to to get us to act civilly towards one another and to have a fair fight as amber heard, heard would say a fair fight but here's the problem murderers thieves they don't care about the civil law they don't care about rules and regulations they don't they're not going into a ring and following the laws uh, or the rules of wrestling they're coming into your property because they're doing something wrong and they want to destroy your property and they want to take from you illegally unlawfully they're not acting civilly but yet these people write this shit down on paper and expect us in our homes when we're being robbed to act civilly to justify our actions against someone not acting civilly. And sometimes when someone is uncivil against you, the only way you're going to be able to protect yourself is to do to them what they're doing to you and to act uncivilly back. You can't be civil against, you can't be civil when you're dealing with an uncivil person. You can't be expected to, if someone is out hacking away at people at Walmart, to expect him to listen to you when you say, well, the right thing to do is to put down your weapon and, and just walk away and turn yourself in. And, you know, that's the civilized thing. They don't care. You're going to have to shoot them. You're going to have to be uncivil. And we shouldn't have to call the police to ask the police, can you use your power to act uncivilly towards an uncivilized person? Meanwhile, people are getting hacked to death. But you got to stand there and watch and wait for the police to come. And then you got to justify your actions if you didn't wait. No, when it comes to uncivilized people, you have to act uncivilized. This lady's already it's early in the morning and she's already pissed me off i can't believe this am i the only one that thinks this is ignorant this is just so stupid um so let's see some of the maxims there may be loss without injustice okay so so um, if you have to protect your home, it may not be justified in the legal system, you know, and you have to protect yourself. So in the natural law, you are justified, completely justified. A delegated power cannot be delegated. So if God delegates to me the right to save my own life and protect my own self, how is it that I could give that right to the government, to a state? Can I? Can I give that right to them? I don't think so, because here it says a delegated power cannot be delegated. And if I do give a right to the, to the state or to the federal government, can they then give it to the who? Not according to these ancient laws. If they weren't given the right to do it, they can't give the right that they didn't have to someone else. And if they did, if I did give them the right to do it, they can't turn around and say, well, we're not going to do it. We're going to let somebody else do it. No, I didn't give the right to them. I gave it to you. That's like going to work and saying, well, I'm not going to do my job today. I'm going to tell him to do my job. And then he doesn't do your job. And then you say, well, it's his fault because he didn't do my job. No, it's your fault. You didn't do your job. Let's see what some of these other dignity, dignity supposes office and charge and is not divisible. 
craft is not justified by any way any roundabout way so she's crafting here she's crafting this law she's crafting it to protect criminals and to take rights away from home homeowners So I got to have a conversation with the person coming onto my property to ask them what are their intentions. And if they say, well, my intention is to murder you, then I can shoot them. I already know they have bad intentions when they started taking apart my well, my water well, when they started killing my animals, when they when they um, destroyed my vehicle, when they broke down my front door. I already know that their intentions are bad. But I have to have, she's saying I have to have a conversation with them to see what their intentions are before I can use force against them to protect what I have. The government's not going to replace what I have. And what, do I have to wait for them to sexually assault me? or my child before I can use force against them? How am I supposed to know? This is crafting, crafting rights, crafting to take away rights. Two persons cannot entirely be master of the same thing. So she wants to be master of my rights. She wants to be master of what it is I can protect and what it is I can't protect. So am I the master of my body or is she? I don't know. I'm confused now by what she's writing. Two cannot entirely possess one thing. So do I own my body or does she? According to her, she's a part owner of my body because she can say what I can have done to me and what I can't. So this sounds like bullying to me. Bullying, which is what really the legal system is. It's a bunch of bullies writing shit down on paper and telling you, you have to follow what they're saying. And if you don't, and if you don't interpret it correctly, you're not justified in your actions. Good laws take their origins from bad practices. So if I have a right to my body and that right has been around since the dawn of time, then how is it that these people can try to take that away? Contract does not arise from injury. Someone injured during a, a home invasion does not allow them to have rights the next time they invade somebody's home. Fiction yields to truth. This entire act is, fish, is fiction. Even the parts that we like is fiction because we don't have to write down the fact that we have a right to protect what's ours. Their writing this down is just fiction. And any right they try to take away from us that's a basic human right is fiction. Let's see what else it says in here. Man is liable to error or to error is inherent to human nature. Okay, well, he shouldn't have been on my property. Doesn't matter what he was trying to do here. He shouldn't have been on my property. Whether he's stealing from me or he's planning on committing some sort of sexual assault, he shouldn't have been on my property. And if he was on my property and he got shot, that's his fault. He shouldn't have been here. And I shouldn't have to justify myself. And it's human nature to make errors. Somebody can come along and say, well, he was sick in the head and he this and he that, which is a story of a lot of people when their family members get 
uh, shot on someone else's property. But that's not my fault. You got to keep track of your, your mentally handicapped people. If you can't keep track of them, don't expect me to. Don't expect me to know who the hell they are or what they want on my property. Inability excuses. I cannot know what someone's intentions are. But if someone comes on my property and starts doing bad things, I can guess at what his intentions are. There is no obligation to things impossible. None is obliged to do impossibilities. How can I know the intentions of someone who comes onto my property uninvited and starts taking things? Where will he stop? I'm supposed to run into my home, according to her, and hide while he takes my things. And when will he stop? When will it stop? When will he say, okay, I've, I've got enough here. My truck's loaded. I don't need to, you know, sexually assault anyone. What if he comes back in? So now he has all my stuff and he's going to come back in. to do bad things. These laws are basically contracts. Once you start once you start following them and accepting them, then it's like you performed a positive act, a voluntary positive act. Sometimes it's by way of your signature, sometimes it's by way of your action. And the state of Texas, that's another issue. The state of Texas is not the Republic of Texas. The Texas Jurisprudence 3rd Edition states under statehood that the, the Republic of Texas did not cease to exist when the state of Texas was formed. It's too early in the morning to be this pissy. It concerns the state that there be an end to lawsuits. They're just creating more lawsuits. This is just more stuff for lawyers to make money off of. It's like a creation of a business by writing laws because now when you break every little log you break, you have to hire an attorney to defend yourself. And it just is more money for the state. It's a business. Law is a business. The legal system is a business. And the way they write things is like it's an intention to create business, to create money for themselves, to justify their court systems, to justify their actions. They're just creating a business and it's all fiction. Um, so in this Amber Heard and Johnny Depp case, I was thinking about contracts and how the attorneys wrote the post nuptial agreement between the two of them, where they agreed that if there was abuse, that one could collect from the other money. So I was wondering, did they write, did the, did the lawyers not think about what they were writing in this post-nuptial contract? Because every person has a responsibility to leave an abusive relationship. If there's abuse, then the person has a responsibility to themselves and their partner to walk away. And so there's not an abuse, there's an event, an event of abuse, a one-time occurrence, and then walk away. It's not like a, why would you stay and just let someone abuse you? If someone's abusing you, leave. 
That's your responsibility to yourself. And if you choose to stay, that's on you. But the lawyer's right. Well, if there's, you know, abuse in the relationship, then one person can collect it against the other person. Well, then doesn't that incentivize one partner to manufacture abuse against the other? And if there is none, to stay in the relationship and provoke the person until they, they have enough videos and recordings to at least convince people that they were abused. So the writing of these contracts is as if they're generating work for themselves. Because these things between Amber Heard and Johnny Depp, these events that occurred, they've been in court three, four times. They, they had the TRO, which is the, the um, domestic, I don't know what you call that thing, uh, to stay away from each other. And then they had, you know, because she filed that, and then they had the divorce, and then they had some issue in Europe somewhere where they sued a magazine and then they had their their um their recent one here in america where they're talking bad about each other and then they got to go to court for that how much income do you think this generated for the state and the attorneys the judges get paid the clerks get paid the bailiffs get paid um the fees, the filing fees, that gets paid. The attorneys on both sides, I'm sure they made millions off of Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. And that's just the last case, which lasted, what, three weeks or something? That's crazy. All because of this, this system of we're going to write all this crap in paper and you got to follow it. And if you don't, now we get to um, make a lot of money off of you. So the way these lawyers, and it's mostly lawyers who uh, actually sit down and write the laws and write the contracts. Are they thinking ahead? Because they're not stupid. Are they thinking ahead? Well, how much money can we get? Because if she has to prove domestic violence before she can get her, her money for being... Um, abused then it incentivizes her to go to court and prove domestic violence which then she has to hire an attorney and the attorneys make a lot of money and it gives business to the courts i think that they knew what they were doing when they wrote that Instead, why didn't the postnuptial agreement say, if you ever feel abused, fucking pack your shit and leave? Because you're not getting shit. The first time you feel like you've been abused, get your shit and fucking walk away. Decisions as it were, no, decisions are as it were jurisdictions. Jurisdictions is power and authority. So a decision is power and authority. A court decision is power and authority. Decisions are also, you could say, in contracts, the rights and obligations. The, the contract is, is like a decision and we agreed on it. So it is a jurisdiction. It's a power and it's an authority. And when there's a, uh, an issue in the contract, you have to go to court and make the court's money. Decisions are as it were jurisdictions and are accepted as truth. So whatever the judge says or whatever the contract says, that's the truth. That's the end of it. The laws of nature are immutable. You come onto my property and it's natural for me to think that if you're trying, to, if you look like you're up to no good or I ask you to leave or it's nighttime and you're starting to tear up my stuff, 
the law of nature in my mind tells me you're up to no good and I need to protect what I have. That's human nature. So writing all these laws go against our human nature. Our, our right to be human beings and make decisions, spur the moment decisions, spontaneous human action in defense of our lives, our property. The laws are established not for individuals, but for the general good. Okay, well here we have the castle doctrine. That applies to an individual who uses force against someone else. They're going to take the individual to court. So for the general good, what would that be? Protect yourself. Why don't they write that down on paper? Whatever you got to do to protect yourself and your family and your property, that, that's what you need to do. Whatever you need to do, if you're on your property, not in your habitation, not in your home, whatever you got to do to protect yourself, you know what? You should do that. That's the general good, isn't it? That'll keep people from coming onto your property and trying to take your stuff. And that's a general good. Natural law is that which hath the same power among all men. The law does not compel to perform what is impossible. Huh. Well, that's interesting when you apply it to the castle, castle doctrine. It's impossible for me to act unlike a human being when I am, in fact, a human being. I know that I have to protect my water source, my food source, my posterity, my property. I know I have to protect those. I'm a human being and I have reason. And I also know that you, if you come onto my property uninvited to, to do anything or looking like you're trying to do something, that I have to do what a human must do. And to tell me that I have to do otherwise is trying to compel me to do an impossibility. What do you accept from them? Where does, where's the line drawn between what's acceptable and what's not acceptable? An unjust law is not law. So this, this is not law. What she's writing down is not law because it's unjust to me. Just because she uses the word justice and calls it justice doesn't make it justice. It's unjust to me. To tell me I have to let someone steal my property. The law compels nobody to the performance of vain and useless things. So if my stuff gets stolen, she's, is she going to repair me and my injury? If she writes an amendment to this law and tells me that I cannot protect my property, then is she going to take the responsibility on to repair me of all the things that I've had stolen from me. Since I can't use deadly force against a robber. The law speaks the same language to all. The law regards the order of nature. Liberty is one is is any uh, liberty is when any one may do what he chooses provided he acts according to good certain predetermined open laws and acted by common consent well i don't consent to her amendment i don't even consent to the castle doctrine 
They shouldn't have to write that down on paper that I have a right to defend myself or my property. Liberty is the natural power of a man to do what he pleases unless one he may be prohibited to do concerning violence or encroaching upon another's rights. You can't go out in public and just start committing violent acts. Even on your property, you shouldn't be committing violent acts. But when someone else comes on your property for nefarious purposes, I'm not going to stand here and ask him, what are you here for? Liberty in an, is an inestimable thing. Liberty cannot be compensated by any price. Liberty is more favorable than all things. It is the part of liberty that everyone must be master of quitting and of retaining his own right. The more frequent the evil, the worse it is. Her doing this is going to cause evil or people to perform more robberies because they're going to say, well, you can't shoot me because I'm just stealing your stuff. I'm just here to steal your stuff. So she's committing a violent act against humanity by telling them that they cannot protect their property which tells people who want to take property that they can do it. That's a violence against peaceful people. An abuse ought to be abolished. Evil is not presumed. You don't have to presume it. She's written it right there. Manifest things do not require proof. So things that have happened, I don't need to prove it. They're manifest. It also says in here somewhere, common things should not be proven. Common things do not require proof. He threatens the innocent who spares the guilty. I'm threatened by this um, law she's trying to pass. The guilty is guilty the minute they step onto my property to do bad things. If you're not just here knocking on my door and then leaving, then I might suppose you're up to no good. And that, re that requires other people to respect my property. C custom is for law. Many things belong not to human laws, but to the divine cognizance. It's, it's well known among people that you have a right to protect what is yours. And they can't law that away. They can't write it away. It comes from a higher power. Nature desires what is perfect. So does the law. This, this thing she's writing is far from perfect. Necessity makes a thing lawful, which otherwise is unlawful. Necessity hath no law. Now, when I, when I read this, necessity makes a, a thing lawful, which is otherwise unlawful. What I'm thinking of is when you see a starving person, don't just walk by. They have a necessity to eat. You should help feed them. That doesn't mean they get to come onto your property and take your stuff. But that if they knock on the door and they say, please give me food, I'm dying and I'm starving, then you're, you have an obligation to give them if you have it. Not for them to just say, well, I'm hungry, so I'm taking it. Here's a good one. It is infamous to lay snares for the innocent by means of the forms of law. This is a snare. This is a snare she is laying to capture innocent people through her written words, supposedly law. This is not a law. It may be legal because she wrote it. It's not a law because it goes against the higher, uh, it goes against common sense. Nobody is above the laws. She's not above the law. How does she presume to write law 
to take away people's natural rights or to determine how they go about administering their own natural rights. She has no right to do that. I don't care who elected her. No one can be both tenant and master. So if I'm a tenant on my property, then is she the master? So if, if I'm the master of my property, she can't assume to be the master because there's not two masters. There's one master and I'm it. It's my property, I'm the master. I say what goes on on my property, not her. They're supposed to legislate for the public property. So if someone were to go into the Capitol building and start taking stuff, is she saying that the police are not going to use force? That they can just take it? That's the rule of law, isn't it? Nobody is bound to furnish arms against himself. So nobody can elect someone and place them into office who that person can then write laws to take away your rights, to take away your right to defend yourself. Isn't that furnishing arms against myself? Nobody is bound to swear to his own disgrace. Nobody is bound to accuse himself. Nobody appears to defraud those who know and consent. Who know and consent. A lot of times we sign papers and we don't know. We consent because we sign it, but we don't know. Nothing which is against reason is lawful. Nothing which is inconvenient is allowed. She wants me to have a conversation with someone when they come onto my property and break my front door down. Are you just going to steal my stuff or are you going to rape me? Let's figure this out before I decide if I want to shoot you or not. No, that's inconvenient. Nothing which is inconvenient is allowed. This whole thing is inconvenient. Nothing is so natural as to dissolve anything in the way in which it was bound together. Therefore, the obligation of words is taken away by words. The obligation of mere consent is dissolved by the contrary consent. There is nothing so agreeable in nature. I'm sorry. There is nothing so agreeable to natural equity than that everything be dissolved by the way in which it was bound. Nothing is so natural as to dissolve anything in the way in which it was bound. All right, so I'm going to end my rant. Um, so think about what I've said, and perhaps we need to um, give this lady a call and tell her exactly what we think of her. And um, if you're in Texas, this is a, the HB number 196. Castle Doctrine Amendment by Meza. You can read the article, let's see, on PolitiFact. And even though she may not have directly said the things that they're saying she said, she's saying them indirectly by the words she's written in the HB 196. Okay, so I think you've got enough arms in your mind to uh, justify sending her a letter or calling her or talking amongst your friends about how stupid this is. With that, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. And I apologize in advance for my language, but th this stuff's just, it's just really making me mad. It's, it's beyond insane. Okay. Um, you guys, uh, I'll probably be posting a few more videos today, so stay tuned.